you joined me for another coin ring and um, this is an interesting one I'll tell you for why um, someone I know on one of the social media platforms I'm not going to say which because they don't want to give that particular medium any uh, kudos etc but it's a good way of keeping in contact with chums um, she sent me a message saying I quite like to buy one of your rings and um, we settled on a on a half crown. Now this one, I ought to, ought to just fess up. I've just annealed that, so it doesn't look quite as. Uh, I haven't got any out. All right. Oh, I don't, oh, hang on. Got one over here. This is brand new. Never been touched by human hands, apart from me. So it doesn't really count. So I've just annealed this one. Anyway, she said we settled on a. Size P half crown, which is about as small as I really want to make one. And I had this one, which I made some time ago. Um, and she said, yeah, that's all right, I like that. Uh, and I said, are you happy with the finish? And she actually wants a, a polished finish. Well, it took me a couple of hours to get this antique finish on here. And I don't really want to remove it because I really like it. And it was it was the first time I'd, I'd used this particular antique finish, so I thought it'd be nice to make one just for her. Well, it's actually for her son. So uh, obviously, data protection, etc. Can't mention her name, but she will know who she is. Hello, <laughs> thank you for buying a ring. I'm about to make it by hand for you. And those who've been following my ring making exploits might realise that it's unusual because. Um, I had a little bit of a confidence crisis when I was trying to make um, uh, make a sixpence ring, and it just didn't didn't work. I managed to kill two old sixpences. So, um, so this is me trying to trying to get back in because my arthritis these days is just such that you know I have to be a little bit careful. So this is a good fun thing for me to try to make. So first is I'm going to bash a hole in it and then I'm going to slap it on here. There's lots of bits that you will have seen before if you go back through the old coin making videos. I'll come back when I'm ready to start folding it all through. Mm, now you know what? I've just punched a 7 16th hole in there. What I always do is keep the little bit from the middle. And she wants a, a large band and I've realised in this one I think I used a I use it's was a free eighth, I think, was it? Let's have a look. Yeah. I used a free eighth to make that wide band. So it's not gonna be as wide a band. <laughs> okay. Put all those away. <laughs> Get another one. And uh let's punch a free eighth hole in it. I'll show you the difference after I've annealed it and punched it. People like to see the annealing process where I take a nice shiny brand new coin and do that with it. Safety first, gas off there and there even though I'm going to be annealing it several more times um, I always turn the gas off in between so here we go this is how it sorry focus this is how it looks now after annealing it and um, let's whack a hole in it now, this is a auto centering little device a little cone there pulls that into the middle Doing this one-handed is never easy, so I'm not going to bother. And then that punches through there. Obviously, let's put that bit in so we can pretend that we know what we're doing. Right, let's come back when I've stopped um, fannying around and just uh, come back to where we, where we started. So here we have the difference of one sixteenth of an inch. So this was um, 7 sixteenths, 
this is three eighths which is six sixteenths and it just on the half a crown especially it makes the actual crown at the top more definable when um, actually turning it into a ring because as this then deforms as we shape it this stretches and you lose the bottom part of the ring uh, the crown when it's a ring so there we are so what we would do is we will move those save those for another day we will pop this little bit in the bag saying the bit from the middle I have taken the deburring tool to this and it takes the rough bit off because any imperfection on the inside rim where we punch that hole out could cause a split and then we've lost the whole ring it would end up doing something like that which we don't want to do even though yeah we have got we have got spare half crowns so next I get a forming die oh I haven't done this for a while you can tell can't you boys and girls all right so that one yes put it over that way and to start this off on here on this press come along fingers I need two hands for this and I sorry not much of a filmmaker you can tell can't you so we use a stainless die to start this off and that's because this is where the main force comes in at the very beginning. Oh, you muppet, come on. I'm going to edit this. This makes that very first tiny little movement. The reason we don't use a steel cone for all of the process is because steel on, well, metal on metal would leave um well it actually destroy the detail in here so then we start once we've started we can then use these fiber cones in there but first i'm going to anneal it again this is where i'm starting to notice the arthritis Pulling that lever isn't, you know, isn't a massive thing, but I certainly feel it in the, in the finger joints here. Anyway, so that now has started to form a cone. What I'll then do is move to a smaller die. Come here. And keep annealing it and squishing it until we've got a much bigger cone and then I shall return we have the makings of a ring now the next part which I've actually started is to go on top of this here mandrel which is <laughs> oh I really shouldn't have bothered trying to make a video should I um, this is um it's a it's a ring stretcher so it's got six spines around here and as the i'll just take that off if we zoom out show you as that rises in there it separates those splines and thus um, enlarges the l so let's plonk that on there and i need to use two hands obviously but first before i do that you know what i'm gonna do yeah set light to it and this is the last stage of that bit there we take that out to a size p or a slightly over a size p and then we bring this in to a size p and then i'm going to just trim off the inside reed there that ridge and because we want it fairly straight we don't want it cone shaped because this side's thinner than this side this will be slightly oversized It'd be a q or an r so Let's get annealing and stretching. We have the makings of a ring. Now, this is oversized and this is still a cone. 
So what we need to do now is push this in, the outside in. And the way we're going to do that, in much the same way as we use the cone to stretch it out, we're going to use a different cone to squish it in. This is called um, Swedish wrap die. But again, if we was just to push that through there, the metal here in this stainless steel die would just squish all of the detail away and we would end up with a nice flat ring, which is what we don't want. We want to keep the detail. So what we do is wrap it in loads and loads of PTFE tape and then an outside edge of electrical tape. So let's get doing that now. And this is how it comes out. So let's unwrap it and see what it looks like. Much more ring shaped. Still needs a bit of work doing to it though. Um, in order to get it nicely ring shaped, I'm going to pull the uh, edges in using these dies. And then I'm gonna actually size this part after I've removed, grinded it out, some of the inside of the reed. It just makes it more comfortable to wear and makes it easier to shrink it in as well because there's no extra metal to try and squeeze in. Right, onward. Ho, 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 ho. And it's 18 mil. Turn that around the outside and that. Turn it around the right way. Because that's what we that's what we were going on. Which is sort of like size size P. I've made it ever so slightly over a size P because we wanted it at 18. Um, so there we there we are. It's done. I've shaved off some of the inside reed just to make it a little bit more comfortable. Next, I need to give it a polish inside and out. So we've got a little Dremel thing type thing. Other multi-tools are available uh, for the inside. And then we've got, so that's that up there. That's that jobby. And then with three different types of polishing compounds, we have the polishing wheel. But I'm not going to film this because this is something that I definitely need to use two hands safely upon. So that's it now. Let's see what it's like after I has polished it. Not too sure on this level of zoom how well this is going to come out. But here we have the, um, the finished article. What I do with these is um, polish them on the wheel and then use the sort of like Dremel type multi-tool attachment on the inside. But then, and this is why, sorry, just drop back. This is why I like to use that smaller die to punch the hole in. As you can see, we actually keep the hole of that crown. So I'll polish it, but I don't want to polish deep into uh, where that detail is there, because otherwise you lose the detail. You just can't see the detail. You can see me in there, look. You can see my reflection. Um, and then I, uh, I run over it with one of these um, nail file things so gently um, to bring out the detail and to put a bit of a shine on there put a bit of a shine on there so that's where we get to this and I am actually quite pleased with that I'm very pleased with that Cupra nickel it's a nice it's a nice metal to work with it doesn't shine up gleaming like um like silver but i'm i'm glad about that because otherwise we would lose that detail brilliant i've enjoyed making this it's not been the trial that i thought it was going to be because I was, I was really worried sometimes when you squish this down you you get a lot of deformation in the reed but yeah so next finish it off give it another um, little polish with the the nice 
I don't know what you call these, polishingy cloffy. Give it a wash out in acetone, then dump it in ceramic lacquer, and that will then be that. Um, you've seen all that before, so uh, yeah, happy with that. And I hope the customer will be as well, or more importantly, her son. Um, I think it's a Christmas present for the son. Nice. Right, that's it, boys and girls. If you like this rubbish, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and all that rubbish. Give us a thumbs up and whatever. This will be on several YouTube channels, no doubt. And also my um, my Facebook page. Thanks for watching. You can finish now.